One of the key ways of identifying intelligent, adaptable animals is in their use of tools. This can be in animals like chimpanzees and otters, or the world's most familiar tool-using animal, the human being. However, the use of various objects which help the animal to survive isn't actually uniform across a species. Some isolated groups can be experts in the use of a twig to extract honey or termites from a narrow gap, which would normally be beyond their reach, and yet an identical group of animals with access both to the food source and to the twigs fail to exploit this as a food source. It normally requires a single individual to successfully attempt to use a device in this way, but once the works, the method is then passed on to the family or the group or the pack, either by some form of verbal communication or, most likely, by observation and copying. Its ability to copy behaviour seems linked to the ease of which the behaviour can indeed be copied. For instance, if having seen an adult use a thin, flexible stick that's been stripped of its leaves to probe a hole to extract termites, the juvenile is very likely to attempt to copy the behaviour if the stick is left near the termites. However, there's no nearby stick and juvenile has to go and find, select an appropriately shaped stick, remove the leaves and then find the termites, they're unlikely to attempt to copy the behaviour. However, this chance of copying does increase if the motivation also increases. For instance, whilst chimpanzees will go fishing for termites, they really adore honey, so more likely to attempt tool creation when the reward is greater, so going fishing for honey is more likely than going fishing for termites. Some parents will therefore give the young the opportunity to copy behaviour so they can actually learn to be more successful rather than just leave them to figure it out for themselves. However, this copying has another stage to it in some animals which does normally require a higher degree of intelligence than the pure copying variety. Here, the animal, having seen another perform the task and presented with the same situation, means they use the object in a slightly different way. This is emulation rather than imitation, and it can provide a more efficient way of extracting the food, and if proved to be successful, then be adopted by the group as a set way to achieve the desired result, and again the group becomes more efficient as a result. This of course leads us to the most prolific tool users of all, the human beings. And the question, how much of our use of the basic tools early on in our history was copied from other users in our tribe or family group, and how much could a lone individual figure it out for themselves? Now, the best way to discover this would be raise some children without seeing any tool use going on, but of course this would be highly unethical. There have however been a number of cases of feral children who survived in the wild, away from civilizations. These in general have difficulty with language, with walking upright, and in general they were not observed to use tools. Now while some of this lack of tool use may have been attributed to walking on all fours, it's highly likely that without anyone to copy, the use of tools is not an easily learned habit. Now the high degree of socialization in humans and the development of language to communicate may explain our use of tools rather than any vastly superior adaptability and intelligence. It may also explain why it took humans so long to move from sticks and stones as tools onto other one tools. Due to our socialization, once any new tool was adopted, it certainly would be able to be spread rapidly among the local population. But until humans had time, energy and motivation, the development of complex tools to solve problems would be extremely slow to develop. It may also explain why some isolated early civilizations failed to develop what might be regarded as fairly basic technological precursors like the wheel.